Europa the Best is one of my favorite cities in Europe and, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful in the world. There's so much to see and do in here that while you could try to squeeze in as much as possible in 24 hours, like I did 9 years ago, you can definitely spend a good 3 days in the city. So, on this video, I'll be showing you a 3-day Budapest itinerary, including where to stay and where to eat. So make sure you stick around till the end for that. Before I talk about what to do on each day, let's just have a quick look at the layout of the city. The name Budapest actually comes from merging the names of two different towns that were separated by the Danube River, Buda and Pest. To this day, you can still see pretty easily where Buda and Pest stand. While Buda stands taller in the mountains and is known for Gallat Hill, Buda Castle and the extremely popular Fisherman's Bastion, Pest is flatter and includes the beautiful parliament, the basilica, and is where you'll find most attractions and facilities. This includes most restaurants, hotels, museums, churches, and so on. What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Danny, and today we are going to start exploring Hungary. On day one, I would recommend starting in Gellert area. So we are going to start with Gellert thermal baths. They're not the most popular ones, but they are very popular as well. And they are just behind me. It's um, a hotel that includes thermal baths as well. And then just behind me, you can see Gellert Hill, which is going to be the next thing we're going to do. So let's start with the thermal bus and then we'll be back to visit the hill and explore more uh, the bridge as well. Now on to the outdoor pool. I will just see how it is because I don't fancy being in the cold outside. <laughs> okay, so between cabin number 19 and cabin number 20, that's the outdoor pool. A bit chilly. It's supposed to be like five or six degrees now. <laughs> so that is the one that is closed currently, which is a shame. Pool. Main pool is only for swimming, it, it's not a thermal pool and basically you need a cap to be able to swim in there. Then right next to it you have a smaller pool and then on each side of the big main pool you've got um, one side with two thermal baths and there's a tiny one in the corner. Uh, they are quite nice and slightly different so one is brown and the other one is blue. So all of this is indoors then they have two outdoor ones. This is currently closed and then they have this one. There's also like sauna and steam rooms over here as well as on each side of the tiny ones. When you do need a towel, get one because otherwise they're too expensive, about 14-15 euros. And the caps are quite expensive as well so if you can't bring everything. They also don't offer flip-flops. Shower-wise, they don't have any um, hairdressers, straighteners, whatever. But there's no shower gel or uh, shampoo. They do have like a liquid that doesn't even look like shower gel. It looks more like um, soap for hand washing. Apart from that, the building is stunning. They have way too many uh, options when it comes to thermal baths. So yeah, um, enough of thermal baths for today. Let's start going up the hill. So I'm just going up uh, Gellert Hill. I remember it is quite steep. It's like a maze. You can go in many different directions. I'm just going to the one closest to the river. And the highlight of the day has to be <laughs> a lady let her hamster go free by mistake. <laughs> there was a dog chasing after the hamster and then the lady chasing after, after the hamster and the hamster was too cute. There's also like a, a children's park there.
So sadly, Citadel, one of my favorite parts of the city, actually, it's currently closed. They're doing uh, restoration works, which are supposed to finish in 2023. So I'm going to try doing what I saw other people doing, which is climbing these rocks and go around it. It doesn't seem too safe, so I'm not too sure about it. I'm going to try in the beginning and then I decide if I should call it off or not. Usually you would go um, across the Citadel to the other side where you've got the castle. Wish me luck. Okay, I would not recommend this. So after all, not worth it. There isn't a proper way around Citadel at the moment, unless you go down. Usually you should be able to go straight to there, you can't, or at the moment, probably this year you won't be able to, so just go down, go back. <laughs> After Gellert Hill and Citadel, walk towards Buddha Castle through Castle Garden Bazaar, where you will find some escalators and a lift towards the castle, so you don't have to hike to the top. So we're just walking around and most of the things seem paid so it's like you have to pay to go to the national gallery you have to pay to go to the library if you want we came from the castle garden and then towards the palace of buddha we've been around here there's plenty of museums we are going back towards the gate i think this is where you have the eagle statue and then towards the fisher fisherman's bastion i cannot talk officially <laughs> So yeah, I would probably recommend a whole day in the castle if you can, in this area of Buddha. If you go to the thermal bus at 9am when they open, then you've got kind of the whole day ahead. If the citadel is still closed, so if you visit in 2022, then it's going to take you a long time from there uh, to the castle. So maybe just go up to the viewpoints and then go back down through the main road, which will save you a lot of time instead of going around like I did. So today we are on Buddha side and then tomorrow we'll be exploring Piss. So starting with uh, Margaret Island, which you can see there in the corner. Uh, and then Pest is also the side where you've got the parliament and also the basilica. Those are two of the most uh, popular buildings here in the city. And then across you can see I cannot actually see the green bridge right at the very end. I don't think you can see it properly. And then towards the right, that's the Gallet Hill. Thanks. To finish the day, head over to Matthias Church where you'll find a mini replica with some instructions in Braille for people with visual impairment. I'm generally not very interested in visiting churches, but this one was certainly an exception. Straight after, we went to probably the best location for sunset watching in Budapest, Fisherman's Bastion. The views from here are incredible all over and you can expect to find loads of people around this time of the day. Budapest is also beautiful at night, so I can highly recommend an evening walk along the river. So good morning from Budapest. Uh, today is the day number two and we are going to explore Margaret Island. And straight after that, then we're going to go explore the Pest site. I would recommend starting this day a little bit early, around 8 to 9 a.m. especially if you're doing it during uh, winter. It is a quite full on day as there is a lot to see in Pest site. Pest is a side of the parliament, so there is a lot of museums. That's where you're going to find uh, most or many at least hotels, loads of restaurants, and also loads of churches and synagogues. So it's probably the busiest area when it comes to like things to see. Margaret Island isn't looking as nice as last time I was here. Uh, obviously because it's winter, but it would be very nice to see it during uh, spring or summer when everything is a lot greener. <laughs> okay. 
As you walk past the parliament, you'll find a monument in memory of those killed at the river by a fascist party during World War II. This is called the Shoes on the Danube Bank. After visiting St. Stephen's Basilica, make your way to one of the most popular museums, the super fun 3D gallery. Here you can test your creativity and have a lot of fun with your friends. At least, we definitely did. Another very popular museum in the area is Flipper Museum, a pinball museum that is more of an arcade to be honest. For about 9.5 euros you get access to their gigantic amount of arcade machines that will keep you entertained for as long as you please. We had loads of fun and I now wish we had something like this in London. <laughs> And before we move on to the third day, let me just show you how much fun we actually had. Okay, okay, okay. I see, I see. You go. You can do it. You got a piano mover. Com duas mãos, com duas mãos. Com duas mãos. Não porra. O que é que consegues chegar ali? Hello everyone, it is day three in Budapest. We have seen Buda so far on day one, we have seen Pest on day two. And of course, if you're visiting during winter and if you are kind of relaxing when you're here and you don't want to rush and see a lot in one day, then I'm sure you're gonna have stuff that you will be missing for the third day, which is exactly what we will be covering today. So that will be mostly the area of the Hero Square and the castle and the park nearby. It is also where you have the most popular thermal baths in Budapest. You might have other things that you enjoy that you want to visit, so add them on your itinerary on day three. reasons we ended up not going to the most popular and probably most beautiful thermal baths in the city. That being said, you're allowed to visit a portion of their interiors where you can learn about the history of thermal baths in the country. So after that we decided to go to the castle which I think is extremely beautiful but I can never get the name or at least the pronunciation of it properly. So I'll just leave it as it is. From the Museum of Hungarian Agriculture, you can actually buy different tickets. There's one only for the museum, which if I remember the prices correctly, I'll try to check them later and make sure I'm saying them right, uh, is 1,900 FT. Um, 
that's for the museum only. And then you can buy a combined ticket that also has a uh, tour to the tower up there to the top and this one over here and that will be 3000 FT. If you only want to visit both of the towers then that will be 900 FT. Sadly, the last ice skating session before lunchtime was happening while we were visiting the area and we kind of only realized that once we went to the rink. So I guess no ice skating for us. We then went to the next destination after having an amazing lunch in the area, which I'll talk about very soon. And the destination was Tropicaria. Yes, you guessed it, a mixture of tropics with ocean area. As always, I was a happy kid exploring around and discovering new species, so I can say that even though the building was not very big, I really enjoyed the experience and they do have a good amount of stuff to see. There's a lot more things you can do in the city, including taking the chairlift all the way to the Elizabeth Lookout, taking a boat tour along the Danube River, or even exploring the beautiful synagogues in Pest. But there's so much I can include in a video without bore people to death, so if you would like to know everything that there is to see and do in Budapest, including loads of dining and accommodation options, link is in the description and in the card that is popping up on your screen. Oh, and I have also added abandoned places for those who love to explore them. Before we finish this video, I would love to cover where to eat and where to stay for the night. As for eating out, we ended up not going to many places, but there was one that we did and I absolutely loved it, both for the views and the food. Now, I am not very good with pronunciation of some places, and this is one of them, just like I said before, uh, but I'm sure you can tell where it is. I've also added a name so you can't really miss it. If you're into unique dining spots, then I would recommend For Sale Pop, Kiosk, and Intermezzo Roof Terrace. Oh, and if you try any typical food, go for goulash soup. We've also tried chimney cake for the very first time. As for accommodation, I would highly recommend both the places we stayed at. For backpackers and low-budget travelers, Adagio Hostel 2.0 Basilica, yes, I know, a quite interesting name, is a no-brainer. This was definitely one of the best hostels I stayed at, and even though we got two drunk guys coming at 3am and throwing their t-shirts in the air while they stripped down next to our bunk beds, I would say that the views and the accommodation itself were pretty good for a hostel. However, if you prefer to pay more for a better service and a lot more comfort, but still want to get the views, I highly recommend Hotel Rum. Pretty clever name, I would say. The breakfast was delicious and the views towards the town are pretty nice. Thank you so much for sticking around until the end, I know this was a quite long one, but I could not miss anything when it comes to Budapest. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, leave a like, let me know what are your plans in Budapest, and make sure you stay a bit longer to enjoy some bloopers, because, uh, you know. I'm quite messy and a video of mine is not a video of mine without bloopers. Or maybe it is. Uh, anyways, enjoy it! Bye bye! <laughs>